Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the select board meeting of February 10th, 2016. Um, we will call to order this meeting tonight. And first order of business would be the consent agenda. Everybody had a chance to read that. Mm -hmm. So I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. Second. Uh, you want to accept for uh, abatements? Water abatements. Do we need to read any additional? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. And, uh, I guess we'll take public comments. Is there anybody here that has any comments this evening from 7 to 7.15? On. We have an appointment at 7.15, so we'll start with um, old business on Holly Road uh, and Laurel Drive, order of taking. And this is uh, what we had um, at our fall town meeting, and this is the final uh, this step. This is the penultimate step, so we, uh, <laughs> we have you uh, take, the, uh, take a vote on the order of taking for both uh, Laurel Drive and Holly Road. Uh, and then we uh, have until the 19th to uh, file these with the Hampshire uh, County of Deeds. We get all the County last person on Holly Road, or we still have one we missing have that in action? We have one connection that is that one abutter that has not uh, filed their paperwork. Okay. But we've talked about that because the abutter does not actually um, have property that abuts the paved portion of the road. Uh, the select board decided that uh, there was very little risk uh, in proceeding with this. I move that we sign the orders for the taking of Holly Road and Laurel Drive. Okay. Second. Any further have, comment? Have they been served papers that, that this is all the, the actual owners of that last lot? Yes, yes. So the, they have the residents in South Deerfield. We sent them a letter. Uh, I want to say it was back in November, uh, and they never responded. Uh, we, we reached out to them again, uh, again, no response. So um, doesn't look like we're going to get it. We have 120 days to take action from the date of the town meeting. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Okay, we'll So there we had had last week um, um, some comments on who uh, we would like to dedicate the annual report to. Um, we have had in the past uh, several people, I believe last week, um, there was two nominees by um, Town Clerk, and um, and they were just Helen. Uh, Helen by Irene Benbin. And then Jerry nominated um, Howard Koski. Howard Koski, yeah. And I had nominated um, Dan Dudkevich. All oh, great any people. Further, any other further people that you could think of? We also have the um, Fred Oakley Award also that we uh, dedicate to also, so we could certainly uh, do that also with these people. Um, certainly, too, we could divide them. Um, do you have any discussion on that? Or how would you like to proceed? I thought if, if we all ranked them one to four and just totaled up the ranking, we could, you know, based on the four of us, we could come okay. up with it. Okay. Cool. So, so move that somehow all of these people will be nominated for part of the dedication of the um, either the Fred Oakley Award or the town book. Mm -hmm. Right. And we can just write those names down, list them one through four, and we can just give them the David and then okay. be based on the, the, the number. Oh, right now, or just do it via email? Via email would be fine. Is, Is that, that okay not with fine? You? Yeah. you just need the answer by tomorrow, right? 
No, we don't need the answer until the 17th. We have, we have time to continue working on this. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. What, who's the other one you said? Dan Dukkevitz, Helen Bai, Irene Ben Ben, and Howard Kosky. Howard Kosky. And, and uh, Madam Chair, would you like the second highest to receive the Fred Oakley Award? Would that be the pleasure of the board? I think it's a good idea. Okay. Make a motion that the second highest point getter be the recipient of the uh, Fred Oakley Award. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah. <clears throat> Any idea of how long these uh, public servants have been in? Oh, God. A long time. I, I had said last week that uh, Dan Dukevich was on Long Range Planning and Conservation Commission, yeah. Board of Selectmen, and CPA at Hawk. CPA at Hawk. So he has many years of service because um, a lot of those boards were long. And then I As does and Helen and Helen, I ran. Yeah, yeah, Helen and, Helen and Irene have been registers there forever, for, yeah. for many years. Yeah. Um, and Howard Kosky was on the Finance Committee for 30 years. 30 years. And as well as many other ad hoc committees. I think it's safe to say that all four people we've uh, nominated have uh, shown service that can be measured in decades. Right. Right. Uh, we'll, we'll do little writes, uh, write ups on each of them for mm -hmm. the town report. Mm -hmm. all right. Sounds good. Thank you. Uh, number six, so you want to do How long will that conversation be? we got about five minutes to leave. About five minutes, so, and that's okay. the last of the uh, agenda. agenda. So, do you want to start the budget for eight well, minutes? Let me just give a, uh, a summary of where we are right now. The Finance Committee is meeting on the uh, the Saturday, the 13th at 1 p.m. over at the Public Safety Complex, and they're going to be putting together a schedule for appointments with the departments. You have an appointment on the 24th of February with all public safety budgets, that's police, fire, building inspections. Um, and then you have a uh, tentative appointment on March 2nd with the school department. So that's where we are right now with the, uh, the appointments. Okay. That's good. Um, On Friday, there's a meeting with DP, DOT. That's right. Uh, we're going to be meeting with the Massachusetts Department of Transportation on Friday morning to talk about the uh, the uh, bridge over Fort River on Bay Road. Uh, we received an informal report from Mass DOT that the bridge is in need of uh, immediate repairs, and their plan is at this moment to close down one lane and restrict the weight limit on the on the bridge. Uh, apparently they're going to be working on that uh, shortly this month, uh, possibly as early as next week. Uh, we'll be meeting with Mass DOT on Friday morning in order to put together an effective uh, plan in order to manage traffic as well as to address public safety concerns and emergency response, as well as to find out more about the bridge and what may be wrong with it, uh, as well as a construction schedule, as well as a possible impact upon the Route 9 widening, widening project slated for this summer. There's been concern. I've had people speak to me about how are the milk trucks going to get through and it's going to be a roundabout route for a lot of um, inconvenience for people. Mm -hmm. yeah. As well as school buses. And there'll be a copy of that report that we can have Friday? Uh, I don't know if we'll have it Friday, but as soon as we get it, we will So they present. really don't have any idea what kind of weight they're talking about at this point? Three tons. That's the limit. That's the, limit. the limit yeah. that they told me at this point. Mm -hmm. John, what's the name of the over three tons, right? Yeah, they are. They're willing to uh, at least entertain the idea of permits being filed, so that the fire trucks or other emergency vehicles could go over. But the fire chief has to give them axle 
distances and weight distribution loads and all this other stuff, and, and they, they may still just deny the request. So, uh, yeah, I think three tons is How, uh, I mean, a lot of the vehicles. One of the big questions I'd like you to ask them on Friday is if they're going to uh, fast track this like they did the little bridge in South Hadley on 47, because that was a major dis uh, disruption too when they did that. And they did it in a reasonable amount of time, six, eight months they had it done. So I hope yeah. they realize the, the, the effect wish, they're going to have on, on that part of town. I wish Mike was here tonight because I know he has actually spoken at length, at least on the phone, with uh, the <coughs> director who's in charge of this over there. But um, I want to speak out of school. But from what Mike told me, this project that they're going to be doing down there is really <coughs> just a, uh, I don't know how he described it, basically a, a Band-Aid. This is not going to be a full bridge repair, as I understand it. Not going to be a full bridge replacement. Right. So, uh, however long they are down there, they're probably going to have to be down there again eventually in the future. Uh, mm -hmm. But, you know, like I said, I, don't quote me on that. That's just from what, what Mike's got. What was the time frame our, our, be, be, our, our emergency vehicles and things? They gave none. They gave none, and, and uh, that, that part worries the both of us. It's like separating the whole that side of yeah, town. Yeah, the whole south end of town. Mike did a, a drive through uh, with his car just to do timing, uh, see how long it would take. We've had meetings with the school department about the <coughs> bus uh, adjustments of the bus schedules and stuff. Uh, I, I don't remember the exact number. He said, David, do you remember? He said it added six to ten minutes. To six minutes. Six minutes of travel time to get down south. On a good um, day. On a good day. And I'm, I'm assuming, I don't think he was driving one of the engines. I think he was just driving his normal vehicle. So it's going to be, you know, there's going to be an impact for sure. And probably we'll end up having mutual aid at that end of town, I would think. He's working on that as well. The thing that, you know, like I said, the other thing I'm thinking about is it's been three weeks and they haven't done anything about this, and you still got, you know, yeah. 80,000 pound vehicles going over that bridge. So is it really that bad or yeah. not? That's, you know. Part of that's part of what prompted the phone calls down there because initially we had heard a, m a month or more and then the next thing was well maybe sooner and, and then Mike called and said well if it's you know if it's that bad then why not tomorrow yeah and then when he finally talked to the director he explained that the, the moment he gets the reports back from his engineers if they say it's not safe it's getting shut down and that could have been that same afternoon so um, there's going to be some significant planning that's going to have to be put together very quickly, at least from the fire department's perspective. Cruisers is a little bit different. I'm on board more about traffic queuing, where they're going to queue, where the traffic lights go, just so we can get cruisers through there. The fire trucks are a whole different, you know, whole different. Yeah, ambulance fire trucks certainly. Ambulance fire trucks, yeah. They they're going to have to go around. There's, I mean, unless they unless they accept the waivers uh, on the on the loads. You know, and like I said, I don't have to tell you, I, I, South Hadley comes through there, Belchtown comes through there, there's, there's a ton of ambulances that come down that road. Yeah. PVTA bus routes, I mean, it's it's a ma major major bypass for a lot of people. So we're taking this very seriously. We're, we're grateful that they've reached out and given us a, at least informal advance warning because we it would be a completely different situation if we didn't know this was happening and there was going to be some sort of action taken possibly as early as next Tuesday. Um, so meeting with Mass DOT on Friday is critically important. We'll do as best our, that we can in order to help the state manage their project, their bridge. Are you, is fire or police going over there with you? Or? Yes, so we're going to have DPW, schools, police, fire. Building inspector has been invited. Oh, yeah. Jerry, <coughs> as liaison, has been at 9.30 on Friday morning. John, the fast track on both bridge was that on the one in the dingle there? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, on 47. Where they built them soccer fields mm -hmm. on 47 over in South Adley. Thank you. Mm -hmm. The second dip, actually. Yeah. That. But they also did that bridge um, in East Amherst. East Hampton in front of the DPW was done East very quickly yep. as well. And, but the one in Amherst took a little while, but that was a one-way traffic going each, right. each way going up route two. Right, right. 
for a while. Till to, I mean, uh, Pelham Hill. Yeah. That, that bridge there. How long was Meadow Street down for? Three years? <coughs> that was yeah, bad. Meadow Street yeah. was bad, yeah. yeah. Okay. So we're you suspending budget conversation until? I, it's 7.15. I think we should move to our hearing, um, continuation of hearing. For pride. Hello. Welcome. Open the public hearing on the Pride LLC application for a liquor license, and then move to continue the public hearing. Oh, date, time in the future, but that'll be determined by um, the board. Mm -hmm. uh, so I here open this uh, hearing with Pride at this point. Good evening. I'm James Channing, attorney for Pride. With me is Marcia Del Monte, the president for Pride. Uh, we are asking for a continuance, very briefly, to the next available date, if possible. Uh, just as well as a background or justification as to why we are asking for this continuance. Uh, first, there was a scheduling issue we asked for back in January 13th. Um, just as a procedural matter, looking at the agenda, only one of the two issues that we have pending before the select board is on the agenda itself. Uh, we do have the pending beer and wine license, but also the pending storage license as well, which were both continued initially until today's date. Only one of them made the agenda, so we're asking that to both be notified. Uh, in addition, I think that uh, no one would be prejudiced by the request for the continuance. I'm not sure if there's any public here who are asking. Again, I also noted there's only four of the five members. We're requesting it did start with the five members. We are again requesting that. Uh, we have the opportunity to have all five members present for any deliberation. I'm not sure if the town itself has adopted or an individual can participate remotely or not. Uh, but hearing the side of caution with, with my ignorance for that, we are asking that all five members be uh, physically present for all discussion with respect to these two requests. Um, also, I think that there's no history of uh, denying requests. I can tell you back procedurally back when we were here in October, we had the option of either continuing it when there were only four members or going forward at that point, obviously, you know, we chose and kind of say we uh, would have liked for a continuance. That's what we are doing today. It's okay, can just ask a question? Or? Uh, yeah, I was going to ask how the conservation meeting went last mm -hmm. night. We, we got our marching orders from the conservation. I don't think that that uh, no longer is, is a pending issue as it was last time we were here. Marching orders for? In terms of they made requests for determination as to what uh, we can and can't do. So again, I haven't received the actual order yet, but it was a public hearing. But what's been allowed uh, is for the buildings to be foundations of all the buildings except for what's known as the Thomas House, which is the house closest to the Getty. That's within the, the floodplain, the 100 year floodplain. So that cannot be, nothing can be done with that until we file a notice of intent. Uh, as well as there's one garage that's located, it's only a concrete slab, but it's still located within the floodplain as well. Uh, so that will not be touched until formal notice of intent is filed. Uh, with respect to the brush, they did give us permission to clean up, chip the brush, provided obviously it's chipped into a truck and everything's taken off property. There's nothing on parcels. The remaining of the foundations we've gotten there permission or authorization to uh, break those in, as well as clean fill them, bring in clean fill, removing the foundations and clean filling it level to grade. Uh, and that's from the Conservation Commission standpoint. Uh, from a state standpoint, we are still waiting permission or need to file with MISA, the Massachusetts Endangered Species Act, and they have up to 60 days attack. But we did have an order from MISA as well, uh, pinning the determination of Conservation Commission that nothing could be done. So while on a conservation standpoint, we are in a position to uh, continue work on the site, we are still waiting for state approval, which could take up to 60 days. It's my understanding that typically uh, it is less than that. Uh, but that's 60 where days since yesterday's determination? Since our filing, which we only received a letter from MISA or from the state yesterday, mm -hmm. we anticipate that to be filed by the end of the week, uh, depending on their determination. Obviously. But from a conservation commission standpoint, they did, uh, there was a hearing last night on a request for determination of applicability. Uh, they did make, I believe it was four or five findings with respect to that. We're going to just summarize them. Uh, I will have a formal order in the near future and be able to uh, give additional information if that's there. Um, just a question I had is, yeah. to your point, there are two <coughs> separate issues in front of the select board. 
And I think our understanding from one of the initial meetings is that you presented two different drawings and said in order for you to go back to the planning board with your proposed design, you really needed to know whether or not that um, wine and beer license was going to be granted. I understand. So, so I'm just questioning, is that setting you back? Because I was certainly prepared to speak to that tonight if people wanted to talk about it, but you're asking that they both be done together? We're asking that, that they both be, the public hearing was be, um, began back in, I think it was January 6th, and when they were both mm -hmm. open and continued, we're asking that they both be scheduled at the same time and heard. Um, obviously the beer and wine is contingent on planning. Uh, are we in a position to go forward with planning as well? I mean, we really want to file, we want to get this going. Like everyone does, we want to file in March, also the beer and wine, but the storage as well, I think is actually, quite frankly, more important. If we don't get the storage license, it's not going to be a gas station for the store. So there's no sense of us putting the planning, quite frankly. Uh, will we go forward with the planning uh, regardless of what happens to the beer and wine? Yes. Will we go with the planning uh, if the storage license were to be denied? No. And the planning board is the one, or the conservation is the one for the storage? The conservation no. gave us approval, the select board. Yeah. Uh, the one for the storage license. I think the fire chief's given his uh, initial approval with respect to this mm -hmm. appropriateness. And so then it's now up to the select board to issue that license, which again, the hearing did start back in, I'll say January 6th, they're back in our last time here. Mm -hmm. uh, was continued, my understanding is continued to today's day, continue to a future day. Mm -hmm. Okay, your contractor moved all the equipment off, so when are you going to chip the brush? We're going to bring in. Uh, Pending MISA approval, we'll bring in a chip of brush and it's going to be chipped straight into a, a backload or, or a uh, dump truck because it can't be conservation's orders. It cannot be done and nothing can be left on site. So it's going to be chipped straight into and then removed as soon as feasible, whether it be the environmental or weather. But the first and foremost, we have marching orders from MISA that we cannot do anything until they. <laughs> I have no problem continuing. Make a motion we continue the hearing. What's the date, next available date for us? 24th. 24th. Right. Is that our next February? Well, we have uh, February 24th. He's talking about 60 days. I mean, I no MISA no. for 60 days. Yeah. That, that's for MISA, yes, but we're <coughs> in a position. You want to do the storage tanks? Do a four storage in the beer and yeah. wine license. Um, I think Conservation Commission was addressed enough last night uh, to proceed on those two, in my opinion. We'll get some feedback from them as well. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, and then another um, topic of interest is going to be any sort of um, violations uh, that have been previously levied by ABCC. Excellent. We'd like to have an understanding of uh, any outcomes there. Yes. Motion. Motion on the floor. So we need a date and time certain a second. for the continuation. We have time on the 24th and we have uh, time on the 2nd. We'll be available at either date. Yeah. Like to move it along. The five of us will be available. On the 24th. Can I have a second to Jerry's motion? Second. Uh, any other further discussion? What well, date? When's the date? 24th? 24th. Oh. 24th at 7.15. 7.15, all right. Okay. Well, I'll be I apologize for both matters. For yes, yes, we'll make sure. sure. Yeah. I appreciate it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Is there a reason why both of them weren't on the agenda? Um, I'll have to go over my notes on that one. Okay. Thank you. Gentlemen, see you on the 24th. I hope <laughs> <laughs> the 24th. Yes, okay. I'm here for the, we have the budget stuff that night anyway. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Uh, so, the, the the, the, as I said, the um, Saturday's the meeting, Saturday. Saturday meeting with the planning, uh, the we finance start. committee, 1 p.m. over at the 
public safety complex. Uh, you have appointments with public safety departments on the 24th, right after your hearing with Pride LLC. And on the 2nd, you have a tentative appointment with the uh, with the school department uh, to review their budget. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. That's, that's the only schedule I have at this point. Right. Any questions? No, I'm going to try to go to, um, I have to go to Boston on Saturday, but I'm, um, I'll be there. Do, yeah, they, so they're meeting at 1 o'clock, going to be their standing meeting on a Saturday? I, th I think one of the members has a morning conflict, so I think we can count on them being uh, a Saturday afternoon committee. All right. I'll, well, I'll go to as many as I can. And I work every other Saturday, yeah. so I'll try okay. to coordinate something to go to every other. Yeah, I think there's a more inconvenient meeting time, but it works for them and they're the volunteers, yeah. so yeah. yeah. Um, and then in terms of the RFPs, David, we have an update on that in terms of what's going out and what will be ready for. Right now we have two RFPs that are, uh, one RFP which has been issued, which is for the sale of North Hadley Village Hall. That has a deadline of March 21st at 2 p.m. Mm -hmm. The uh, I know that the Municipal Building Committee has provided some feedback on that RFP and that there's been some correspondence between the Chair of the Select Board and the Municipal Building Committee uh, as to the, the comments there. So we may see an, an addendum issued on that uh, particular um, uh, RFP. There are three RFPs which have been requested, uh, so we have three people interested in that particular property. Mm -hmm. There are there is an RFQ that is uh, for an owner's project manager for the uh, municipal buildings other than the library that is in draft form and it's being circulated for comments. Uh, I I know that are you gentlemen here tonight representing the building committee? Yes. I, I heard there was some concerns regarding the RFP for the owner's project manager. Not concerns, but there was some feedback that you guys had that could possibly help streamline the system and the way it gets done. Um, you guys were at the meeting last night? Yeah, we had a meeting last mm -hmm. night okay. to discuss that. So that's why we decided to come to talk to you. Uh, mm -hmm. As the, the RFQ was written, for the OPM, essentially everything with regard to the, uh, that person would be going back directly to your board. So we decided to come on in and ask you as a board how you would like to approach this because our thought process was we were, our committee is here to try to take a lot of that day-to-day -day burden off of you and so before we wrote some suggestions in with regard to that RFQ, we wanted to talk to you on what your thought process on this. Ours was, you know, we're a committee, we can try to do a lot of the um, grunt work for you, a lot of the day-to-day -day stuff. And then uh, and we also thought that we need to get more people involved with regard to each individual building and then be re be able to report back to you so you're not the, the, this being so s such a large project with multiple buildings it could really tie up a lot of your time weekly so our thought process would be vetted through you vetted through us and then back to you to make the decisions so it depends on how you want it. Exactly. Okay. They've been involved through, yeah. you know, from day one with all, all mm -hmm. these problems that we've been running into. Yeah. So I, I, I have total faith in that committee. They've, they've all brought the facts forward to us time and time again. Yeah, I mean, I think we need to be crystal clear on the, the, the authorities and all that stuff, but it certainly doesn't make any sense to me that five part-time officials who are working during the day are going to be able to constructively have that sort of immediacy of supervision. But I'm just Where's curious. Where's the draft well, anyway? Can I just, um, so you and, did you and Guilford work on that initial? I mean, was there um, any reasoning behind 
the language, or was it just that, that it was open for discussion? It's, so it's that open we, for discussion, yeah, and okay. if, if that's the will of the board, I'm happy to make the change. In a town that didn't have a planning, a building committees, uh, I mean, I, I certainly see that going on there. Mm -hmm. But I, I think, with the nature of their plan of our building committee, that it makes sense for some of the responsibilities to go through you. And I think you're far more qualified to help us with some of these decisions with the mix of, of what your committee is to begin with. Absolutely. Yeah. So but what I, what with I, that in mind. What I do think, I know one of the things in, in there had to do with, um, well, I don't know if it was overtly stated, but it certainly suggested kind of a, a frequency of contact. So what we may need to do, though, is having like a, a some sort of standing agenda item so that the select, if, the, if there's a delegation of authority in that regard, that the select board is in lockstep with um, whatever's happening, you know, so that it's not three weeks goes by and a whole bunch of stuff happens, and then we're like, whoa. You know? So our point is, I think, is that it's a draft form. I think you guys have some great suggestions for it. I personally am not offended by it at all, and I, I think it's the way it should be done since we have a planning committee. So whatever you guys can do to get us amended to that draft and get it back here so that we can look at it and, and massage this so everybody's doing their responsibilities that is best suits the town, I'm all for it. And later on, I think that we're going to have to try to figure out how this um, discussion between should it be during the daytime set up, and it's got to be uh, at least on a weekly basis somehow, and, yeah. and it's going to be at some length of time too with regard to how we can approach this. And it can even be chair to chair with yes. a written distribution to everybody, but but it, there has to be regular and frequent right contact. Yeah. And Peri when, periodically, I mean, you guys are emailing us mm -hmm. board members. And you know it's very informative that that we get all that information, so we're all on the same page when we come into a meeting like this, and we know where we're at. Quite honestly, I, uh, one of our thought processes later on, when we start getting the buildings in line and going down each individual building, that uh, we're probably going to have to have almost like subcommittees dealing with each individual building and then come back to the one board back to then back to you so we have this continual process mm -hmm. of information mm -hmm. and but not burdening you with the minor details but you, certainly your board's the one that's going to make that final decision on mm -hmm. which way do we go now mm -hmm. on certain aspects and that's what our feeling was mm -hmm. All right, good. and i think um, the other thing that probably begs comment too is um, you know defining the role of the the OPM the actual responsibilities so it's it just from the experience that we're having on the um, library building committee you know kind of the, the role that um, DA Sullivan is playing in that and then the architect kind of yeah we had making sure those are in possible suggestions on that we felt yeah. that there was a bit of an overlap with right. regard to how that read yeah. And I think there could be easily some language to clear that up. Okay. Yeah. So is it your intent to get that? Yes. Is David going to send our David comment? All right, so, so we have a, an agenda item on the 24th for comments having to do with the OPM RFQ. So if you could get those to me, I can uh, incorporate them into a clean draft. Ready yeah. for so this that we can have that for that meeting. That's okay. right. Because there's not going to be much can, to talk about on the hookers building if it's been decided that that's coming down there's well, not going to be any renovations or repairs to that building it's no, already maybe gone. There, it may be used as swing space depending on how all this goes there's so much to, to, to think about and the OEM will be able to decide exactly swing space for what well for what and there's a lot of buildings that need to be dealt I mean with. the library might be the swing space afterwards but could be um, but well, I'm just thinking though you're talking about <laughs> deciding what the buildings are going to be well this has already been set in motion so right, right. yes and I, I think we're going to have two paths there um, if this is if this goes forward with the library we will have one distinct path to follow and you're quite right why should we go ahead and put any more money into building that's probably going to be torn down very quickly so we are we working out those schedules and trying to get something to you on that. Okay. 
And the next question is, okay, if, if, if everything just goes down in, in defeat with regard to the library, mm -hmm. then, then how should we uh, cool. approach the future with regard to the building? That's where the swing, the, the, the senior center could be some uh, swing space for a short amount of time if needed. We're, I mean, it could be the park and rec might not find a place to rent, so could we throw them in there for some interim time? So there's a lot of different questions. The hope is that it won't happen on that. But yeah, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll get you certainly information. That so the board asked about RFPs that are being in the, mm -hmm. in the pipeline. There's a RFP for a draft RFP for property in the center of town with the preference of being within one mile radius of this intersection in a three acre lot uh, with uh, no environmental issues or <coughs> subsurface contamination. Uh, that also is in draft form and that's uh, up for the board to discuss on the 24th. And same thing, your committee yeah, is going to have to comment on that as well. We're going to be making some comments on that. Just okay. very minor ones on that. Yeah, but we want to make sure that certain parcels aren't so it sounds like the 24th, included. most of your committee can be here? Well, yeah. We'll, we'll, make, we'll try to make sure everybody's here and we can go through every all of We'll have the comments beforehand to you. Okay. Sounds good. Anything else on the budget? No? Uh, no, but related to buildings, uh, the uh, select board talked about uh, doing a survey. Mm -hmm. I reached out to the Donahue Institute at the University of Massachusetts. They say that they can do the survey for you, but there's no way that they can have it done by the May 5th town meeting. The October 20th special town meeting, yes, they can. What, what about Guilford's connection there? Was he, he had us? I think it's still very important for a survey. to get the public input on this. You know. Gilbert had a um, private third party, I think, that Amherst had contracted with. Was and that I right? haven't heard anything about that. Okay. Okay. E even if we have to hold it off till special time, you might have to. I think it's worth. Well. How it'll get this thing going? Should I pursue pricing because it's one of the things that's I'm. Um, worrying about uh, in preparation of your annual time meeting warrant is uh, the kind of money that we're now committing ourselves to spending uh, and so I need to I need to start putting together financial strategies uh, for for you all do they have a number for you they don't have a number for me okay. I didn't go I didn't pursue that conversation well they will uh, at least get you that yes I didn't I wanted to make sure I did a check-in with the board before going that far down the road why don't you see what their price is? Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what my next question is, David? Yep. Did you hear back? Uh, you Yes, and I sent you a copy of their, uh, their response. I heard back from both the president of the company as well as the project manager that uh, they uh, are sorry for the delay and that they will have that report to us this week. Right. I, I explained you, to them. You, you encouraged them to have it by Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Right. Friday at the latest. Uh, I told them that uh, this is reports critically important to the town, and that if we don't have it by Friday, then the, there will be some uh, d sharper discussion. We haven't paid them anything yet, have we? We have paid them nothing. What is this? Northeast IT. Mm -hmm. Sorry, you weren't. Oh. There. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're going to be, have you played with this enough, Bridget, to expand on this board docs? I feel pretty comfortable with it. It depends on what you're looking for. Police? Uh, um, a lot of that information is not public, so I can't put it up on there. You should be able to put it on the, on the, uh, down in the executive session, or if they can add another category of not executive session, but what are you looking for? Police what? Police logs. Well, police um, logs. We used to get them, printed copies of them. I thought we just I got the dispatch log. Uh, right, dispatch that's what he's looking for. But I scan them to you in a 
PDF, did that open? I opened the PDFs, but okay. that was sent, yeah, that was sent to my email. Right. So I have been getting some, the ones before that were coming from him for something else, and I couldn't open. Yeah, but he's doing it as an XPS, which I'm not able to change on. Um, oh, you can't even, can you download the XPS? I can get it from my computer, but I can't change it into any other form. Okay. <clears throat> Yeah, if there's another, maybe we can check with board docs and see if there's another um, another category here in the agenda that we can put just for board information. I can make a new category. Okay. Um, I, I know how to do that, so if, and I can put it as a select board only viewing. Yeah. I but I, I'd have to see if an XPS can be opened in there. I, I can try that and, and send you an email when you guys All right. Well, like I said, just when I'm on on a town computer, I just I'd like to look through it all. Okay. Rather than coming from the agenda on board docs and then go back to my own emails. I, I can try that. See if it will open on there if I put it in. So I can I can do that um, for next week's agenda. Okay. Um, any other comments? Um, any other newses? Have you caught on pretty quick, yes. Joyce? It's there. It's not bad. <laughs> I'm getting there. I can do it better for my computer at home, but yeah, I'm I'm used to my computer at home too. But it's getting there. I'm learning. Any more for us? You looking for announcements, Madam mm -hmm. Chair? <coughs> Nothing else for you, unless okay, you have anything else. We do appreciate your continued support. Absolutely. Gotta say that. Thank, Thank you very much. And Keep up the good work, work guys. Thanks. Thank you. The announcements. I have one. I have a couple. Okay. I, I'd like to again uh, invite everybody to the uh, Hadley Public Safety Complex dedication to Dennis J. Huckowitz. Uh, the dedication is going to be on February 20th in 2016. It's going to be from 10 to 1, and it's going to be at the fire station. Uh, 10 to 10.30 is going to be a meet and greet with members of the Huckowitz family, public safety officials, and local officials. And at 10.30, the official dedication of the Dennis J. Huckowitz Public Safety Complex will occur. Please everybody join us there. There's going to be some refreshments and there's going to be some open house and the fellas are going to be able to show their big boy toys. Thank you. And I have uh, two um, um, passings. I have uh, Cecile Bristow, wife of Stephen, um, passed away. We send our condolences to uh, Stephen and his family members and also the passing of um, Mary Lou uh, Vasallo Freund, who is uh, Joanne Keller's mom. Um, our condolences to Joanne and her family also. Thank you. And uh, make a, would someone make a motion to go into executive session? So moved. Not hey, to Jerry, uh, do, you, do they have invitations for that? Uh, they do. All right. You sent one to Dan, did you? Yeah. He was Again. Absolutely. Okay. So I'll make a motion that we go into executive session for purposes of, let me scroll down to that purpose, um, discussing contract negotiations with non-union personnel and for purposes of discussing contract negotiations with union personnel. Uh, as acting chair of the Hadley Select Board, I state that the board has moved in second to enter into executive session and I state that this, the discussion of the matter in open session would have an adverse effect on the town of Hadley. Complete roll call vote, please. Is there a second? Second. Uh, Divine? Yay. Trumbo? Yes. Keegan? Yes. Los Yes. Thank you all. See you in two weeks.